Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and today we are really excited. We've got an awesome species profile for you. We're going to be talking about the Severum. It is a big, majestic cichlid, but it's not very aggressive and it's super cool. A lot of color, a lot of varieties, so stay tuned. So here we have a red shoulder Severum. We've got a number of different varieties we're going to show you today. Uh, we are going to be focusing on Heros fasciatus. That is the species that is most commonly kept in the aquarium. And we're going to show you a red shoulder variety as we see here, a gold Severum and a green Severum. Now what gets a little bit tricky for us is the scientific names. Heros fasciatus is the one that is most commonly kept in the hobby. There's also Heros severus, which is a little bit less common. And then there is yet another less common species, and that is Heros libifer. And that is actually a mouth brooding severum. The rest of these, as we'll see later, they are going to generally lay their eggs on flat surfaces. So they all come from uh, the Amazon basin or these tributaries around the Amazon basin. Uh, the water there is usually slightly acidic to around neutral in, in the upper 70s. Uh, and it's sometimes on the softer side, depending on the specific location. Now these fish will get big and that will present some challenges for us a little bit later, but I've seen them personally as large as 10 inches. And when they are that large, they are quite a large fish because not only are they long, but they're also quite tall. In terms of coloration, again, there are lots of varieties. We're seeing two of them already with the red shoulder and then the gold severum. I'll show you a green severum here very shortly. Uh, there are red spot severums. There's a, a number of varieties that have arisen, especially in the last five or 10 years or so. Uh, the coloration, so again, with the coloration being all over the map in terms of the variety, one of the things that generally holds true is the males tend to have a little bit more color than the females. However, the females can also be quite colorful. Besides looking amazing, I think what attracts a lot of people to these fish is their temperament. For a cichlid, they are relatively mild-mannered fish. They don't really bully a lot of other fish, at least in my experience, and we've kept a lot of severums. Uh, they, they are not super aggressive, which makes it a little bit easier. Here we see the green severum makes it a little bit easier uh, in terms of finding tank mates for them. When it comes to the care of the fish in terms of water parameters, Again, we're right around the typical tropical fish water parameters, somewhere in that mid-70s. We keep ours right around 78, 79 degrees. Sometimes that water will creep up to about 80. Now, for us, pH is a little bit different. So if you look at most sources on the Internet, they're going to tell you slightly acidic to just over neutral, maybe 6.5 to 7.5. Our fish room is at a 7.8 to 8.0. And they've been really happy at that pH. They are growing great. Their colors are wonderful, and they're eating well. When it comes to water hardness, our fish room is generally at around 180 total dissolved solids. It doesn't give us the entire picture, but again, our water is on the harder side and these fish are doing wonderful at our water parameters. Now, when it comes to water quality, this is something that like any fish, you want to have zero ammonia, zero nitrites, trying to keep that those nitrates around that 20 parts per million or less. And I would say that would be beneficial for these fish as well. Feeding they are certainly not picky. Uh, we feed them a variety of foods, anywhere from flake foods to sinking pellets, floating pellets, uh, frozen blood worms, frozen brine shrimp. When they're small, they really like live baby brine. So they are definitely not picky. They also love their vegetables, uh, so cucumbers and even certain types of lettuce. But that also presents some problems when it comes to tank decorations. As you can see in all of the tanks that we show you, there really aren't any live plants. We try, we're try. we trying a little bit of an experiment with some, some jungle val in the 75, but so far that has not been working out. And so in every instance, at least for us, the severums have eaten live plants. They will even eat uh, the floating hornwort at the top of the tank. We don't really have a lot of duckweed going on in the tanks where there are severums because you can see here he's picking at the plastic plant. But they do, at least in our experience, eat plants. And so if you're really into live plants, this may not work out well, uh, but you know, again, there are some tanks set up where you see live plants and it seems to be working out all right. It's just in our experience, live plants haven't worked. Now, when it comes to tank size, again, this is something where the internet is all over the place. So these gold severums and the red shoulder severum that you saw before, they are in a one, four foot, 150 gallon. This green severum is in a 75 gallon tank. I personally wouldn't put anything I wouldn't put a severum in anything less than a 75 could you do a 55 if you had a breeding pair 
I suppose so, but you just have to remember these fish do get big. And when they're at 8 inches, it's not just the fact that they're long. This is a big fish. I know it's hard to kind of visualize on camera. That red that red tail shark that you see is at least 7 inches. Uh, this fish is probably closing in on that 8 or 9 inch mark. And he's also a very tall fish. And this is a 75-gallon tank. And it's, again, anything less. And I think maybe it's probably not the ideal setup. Now, when it comes to breeding these fish... Uh, it's it's not super difficult. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of times, what people will do is they will start out with a group of five or six or seven severum, and they will let them pair off naturally. It just so happens in our 150, I have the two gold severums, and it just so happens that they, we do have a male and female pair. And of course, we've got this red shoulder in here, and they more for the most part ignore each other, leave each other alone. Uh, I have seen the gold severums breeding before and so they laid their eggs on one of the rocks in the aquarium and they guarded those eggs and at that point they did kind of push the other fish to the side but once again this the tank that you're looking at here the 150 is certainly not set up for breeding a number of those eggs fungus anyway we have about probably 10 bristlenose plecos in here and so they made pretty short work of the eggs and that was you know I've seen them attempt to breed a couple times at some point I may try to remove them to a different tank and and allow them to breed I do feel like we may have some issues with our pH being so high uh, if we allow the fry to or allow or attempt to breed them. Uh, the, the pH might have an impact on the number of fry that we get. Uh, the fry, they're, they're basically like angelfish in a sense in that they're going to easily take to live baby brine, crushed flakes. There's going to be a lot of fry and that could be one of the challenges. Uh, there might be two, 300 fry and that's a lot of fish to deal with at one time. Uh, but feeding them, like I said, is pretty easy. So when it comes to tank mates for Severum, again, you look at these, these couple tanks and we're all over the place in terms of the types of fish that we keep with them. I would say a lot of the mild-mannered cichlids are pretty good. I have found that Geophagus and Severum, as you see here, they work out generally very well together. I've kept them with angelfish without any issues, large tetras and barbs without any issues, bristlenose plecos, just about any type of non-aggressive catfish. There's a big Raphael cat in here. Cory cats would probably be okay. You see Garamis are in here as well. Uh, electric blue acara are really nice. A lot of the, the smaller dwarf type South and Central American cichlids. So uh, you could probably go with a pistogramma or keyhole cichlids or sahicas, nanoluteus. Those are all pretty good mixes. I would probably stay away from the more aggressive Central South American cichlids. So I, I, I don't, I wouldn't personally feel comfortable with like Jack Dempsey's or Texas cichlids or Green Terrors or Red Devils or something like that. I think Severums would be easily bullied by those fish. I've seen Severums and Oscars work together without too many issues. Uh, at least in, I've tried it in my case and it, and it wasn't a big problem. But, you know, again, we just, you always want to have a backup plan. So whatever combination you're working on, make sure if it doesn't work, you've got a place to put the troublemaker or the fish that needs to be removed. Uh, in terms of setting the tank up decorations, you see here, we've got some driftwood in our tanks. We've got some rocks. And again, for us, the plants, unfortunately, because the severums have been eating all of our plants, we have to use plastic plants. Not that that's a bad thing. It's just something that I have found necessary if we want to add a little bit of color in the form of any kind of plants. Uh, some people have had success with floating plants, things like hornwort or maybe some guppy grass, wisteria, water sprite. Uh, when I put water sprite and wisteria in there, it was in an instant salad. Like I said, I've seen them eat hornwort as well. And that's why, once again, you don't see a lot of plants, live plants, in either one of these tanks. And also keep in mind, they do dig from time to time, especially our green severum. At one point, he was digging out giant pits in the middle of our 75. I've watched the gold severums dig a little bit. So they might dig up the plants. They might, you know, if you've got a large stack of rocks somewhere, they could destabilize that as well. So if you're interested in giving Severums a try, I highly recommend it. Just make sure you've got a large enough tank, the proper tank mates. This is a great fish. It'll give you 8 to 10 years of enjoyment. It is not the poor man's discus. It stands on its own two feet, on its own two fins, I suppose you would say. Uh, any challenges really just comes with the size and what to do if you get a pair and, and breeding starts to happen. But this is a really great fish. So if you found this video useful, check out some of our other videos. Share, subscribe, and we'll see you soon.